Hi, I'm Uyong Park. Let me show you my paper with the title of Clinical Significance of Tonoma Tonospecific Antibody in Kidney Transplant Recipients with Chronic Antibody Mediated Rejection. This figure shows a proposed model for patients developing de novo DSAs as they evolve from transplantation to subclinical ABMR, chronic ABMR, and finally graft failure. Importantly, the presence of DSA is currently still mandatory for diagnosis of CAMR. However, in the clinical setting, it is not uncommon for the, these diagnostic criteria to appear as an incomplete combination. Therefore, the aim of this study was to investigate clinical outcomes of patients with chronic antibody-mediated rejection according to the presence of the novel DSA. We retrospectively analyzed the medical records of kidney transplant recipients who diagnosed to CAMR by all of the biopsy between 2010 and 2018. Finally, we enrolled 35 kidney transplant recipients. We divided into two groups as follows. 14 kidney transplant recipients with no detectable de novo DSA and 21 kidney transplant recipients with detectable de novo DSA groups. Primary outcome was allowed survival rate according to de novo DSA at diagnosis of CAMR. Secondary outcomes were pathology findings at diagnosis of CAMR, allowed function at one year after diagnosis of CAMR and the amount of proteinuria at diagnosis of CAMR. There were no significant differences in the baseline characteristics between no detectable de novo DSA and detectable de novo DSA groups. However, the proportion of PRA more than 50% in detectable DSA group was significantly higher compared to no detectable DSA group. There were no significant difference in the induction and maintenance immunosuppressive agents at kidney transplantation, diagnosis of CMR, and after treatment, the proportion of previous equity rejection, coexistence of TCMR, time from kidney transplantation to development of de novo DSA, and time from kidney transplantation to diagnosis of CAMR between the two groups. There were no significant differences in the pathology findings between the two groups. At the time of diagnosis of CAMR, both groups had similar arrow function. However, from one month after diagnosis to 12 months, ALD function was lower in no detectable DSA group compared to detectable DSA group. There were no significant differences in the amount of proteinuria at diagnosis and the proportion of proteinuria more than 1.5 gram per day at diagnosis between the two groups. Overall graft survival and graft survival after diagnosis of CAMR according to the presence of the novel DSA, showed no significant differences. Graft survival rate was lower in the high proteinuria group than in the low proteinuria group in no detectable DSA and detectable DSA groups, respectively. There was no significant difference in the graft survival rate between the two groups, regardless of the treatment. In summary, we investigated the clinical outcomes of CAMR based on the presence of the novel DSA. Pathology findings showed the acute and chronic change was more severe in the detectable novel DSA group than in the no detectable novel DSA group. The treatment rate of recipients was higher in detectable de novo DSA group then in the uh, no detectable DSA group, but there was no significant difference of prognosis between the two groups. 
Although the effect of the novelty essay on the prognosis of CAMR is not clear, it would be important not to neglect, neglect treatment for CAMR with risk factors for all of the failure even without the novelty essay. Continuous and rigorous surveillance of DSA and all of the function is needed in patients with CAMR. Thank you for your attention.